Y'all, I can't believe it's here. The launch of Growing Upward, my first ever book, is finally upon us. Today, I want to break down all of the things about the book for you. So glad that you're here. Thank you for joining me. Let's get into it. so much for tuning in. My name is Dustin P, creative coach and consultant. I'm here to help creatives know themselves, their process and their team so that they can create greater things together. And today is a very special episode as the launch of my very first book, Growing Upward, My Lifelong Journey with Mental Health is finally here. It comes out this Tuesday, October the 1st. You're here in the West Georgia area. Um, I know that Underground Bookstore is going to be carrying it as well. I'm super, super excited for this. Uh, at the launch of this episode, we still have time for the pre-order. The pre-orders are going to go all the way up until the book launch on October the 1st. The pre-order gets you free shipping and free access to the audiobook, which is coming together nicely, and it will be sent to you before October 1st. So super pumped about that. Um, today on the show, I just kind of wanted to walk through uh, some like kind of the journey of writing the book and what that looked like. I want to talk about why this book matters to creatives specifically, um, and then some key takeaways that you can be look looking forward to uh, as a part of this book. So first, let's talk about the journey of writing this book. Obviously, I turned 40 earlier this year, and I knew that coming, obviously, into 2024. I was like, oh, I'm turning 40 next year. And writing a book has always been something that I would really, really wanted to do. I felt like I had some things to share. It's why I do this podcast, things that can help other people. It's not just to add noise to whatever else is going on out there. If I don't feel like I can help people, then I don't want to say it. And so uh, I was at a men's retreat um, a year or so ago. Um, up in northwestern part of Virginia with a bunch of really amazing uh, entrepreneurs and businessmen and artists and creatives. And I remember uh, one of them was writing a book. And I was like, man, you're, you're actually doing it. Like it was his first book as well. Um, it's since come out. It's amazing. His name is Blaine Hogan. And uh, I was talking to Blaine. I was like, man, you actually, you're doing it. Like you're, you're actually releasing this book. And I was so inspired that somebody that had never released a book before could actually release it. And so that kind of got me thinking about, okay, what would I write about? And so I prayed hard about it, journaled hard about it, thought on it for months. I sent it to a bunch of friends. I came up with kind of three ideas for books, all of which I fully intend to write. But I was like, hey, which one of these three uh, would you see being a first book offering from me? And it, I think it was a book on culture, which I'm working on over at the culture base. Uh, it was a book about creativity, which Lord knows we have lots of content to cover there. Uh, and then the other one was a memoir, specifically a memoir around my journey with mental health. And honestly, it was the book that I didn't want to write. The other two would have come together much easier. It would have been a lot less uh, emotional strain and mental strain on me to, to put something like that out there. Um, but almost uh, almost every single person uh, that I sent it to of the dozens of people that I sent that list to all replied with, this is the one that you need to write first. And I knew it as much as I didn't want to admit, I knew this was the book that I needed to write. And as I kind of started to lean into it, uh, what kind of propelled me forward into writing the book was a couple of things. Number one, I wanted to leave something behind for my kids that was a documented journey, uh, specifically uh, this mental health journey of my life. I wish I had something like this, uh, kind of an insight into the thoughts of my parents uh, handed down to me at some point, and I want to do that for my kids. Uh, also, I, I, I love helping people. I've been praying through a lot of this purpose statement stuff for my life here recently. And I'll probably be sharing more with that, uh, more with you about that in coming episodes. But I, uh, yeah, I just felt like I wanted to help people uh, and contribute to the conversation. I know mental health has been a buzz phrase and a buzz conversation for a few years now, especially since COVID. Uh, but I do feel like we, we, we still need to talk about it more, especially men. And so um, I've always loved kind of being an open book 
And so I thought I would literally open that book and uh, write it for other people. And so it's important for me to be able to help other people in my life. And so this is a book, this book is kind of a a step towards that. Uh, Why this book, I think matters specifically to creative people as well. First, I think this book is for any, anyone, no matter what they do professionally or, or what their giftings are. Um, but I do know that creative professionals, uh, have a hard time, uh, historically have a, ha- have some harder times, uh, with their mental health. Um, and that could be for a variety of different reasons. I'm not a mental health expert. Um, I don't, uh, have any kind of doctorates or degrees or anything like that. I don't have any certifications when I'm just a regular person contributing to the conversation and sharing my experiences. Uh, my stuff is in no way meant to diagnose or to treat any mental health diseases. You should definitely see a professional about any, any of those things. But, um, I do know that as creatives, we tend to be really sensitive. I'm really sensitive as well. And in that we can hide a lot of these feelings and we can continue to press those things down. And what we all know about pressing things down is eventually you kind of run out of room and you have to kind of take out the garbage, right? Eventually the pressure builds up in the pressure cooker and the the lid explodes. And I, I don't want that for you. I don't want it for me. I don't want it for any of us who are trying to create and contribute something of significance to this world because um, if, if you're gone, then we're going to miss out on what it is that you create and we're going to miss out on the experiences that we could have with you. And so um, I just think that one of the, the biggest proponents in moving your creativity forward is in between your ears, uh, meaning your brain. Uh, and I feel like your mental state uh, should be of one of the most important aspects of health for you um, if you think strategically for a living. And we know creative uh, thinking and creative professionalism is thinking strategically and problem solving. So um, I wrote this book because I felt like this is something that we all need to hear. But for creative specifically, why I'm sharing this on this podcast, why I'm doing it, somebody that's dedicated their lives to helping creatives know themselves, their process and their teams. Part of that, knowing yourself is knowing where you're at mentally, being able to uh, not necessarily self-diagnose, but to at least kind of do some self-checks. And to begin to have some tools to to see how you can <clears throat> overcome the things that you're facing, to also see that you're not alone in this process. That um, that no matter what you're going through, um, there are others that are going through it as well, and there is a community of people who are ready to rally around you and help you in any way possible. Um, I want to take a short break right here before I get into some key takeaways, just to remind you one more time, you can pre-order the book, dustinp.com slash book all the way up until October 1st when it releases. Uh, We have a virtual launch party happening that night on YouTube at 9 p.m. Eastern. I would love for you to tune in for that. There's a link for that on the website as well. I'm going to close today with... Uh, just a few key takeaways from the book that I hope that you hear if you listen to it or pick up on if you're reading physical copy of it. Number one, I said this already, but you're not alone in your journey. You're not alone. I know one of the biggest tactics of the enemy is to lie to you and tell you that you're alone and that you're the only one like this and you should be ashamed of it. And don't talk about it. But trust me, you are not alone. You are never alone. There are people in your life that love you. There are people that care enough about you to uh, write books like this. And uh, I I hope in some way that I'm encouraging you in that that, uh, fact that you're not alone. Um, The second thing I want you to to know from this book or that I want you to take away from this book is that you can overcome. That even though the mental health uh, battle is still one that I engage in every single day, I'm a lot healthier now than I was from the first 40 years of my life. And I can tell you that you can overcome uh, with the, with lots of help, with uh, lots of different strategies and, and techniques that you'll hear about in the book. But uh, it is not lost. It is not a hopeless effort you can overcome. And the last thing I want to tell you about the book that I hope you take away from uh, growing upward is that truth is the most powerful weapon. 
It's the most powerful weapon. Every single morning for the past few months, I've gotten up and journaled in my morning pages. And the first couple of minutes that I wake up while my mind is still kind of in that dream state, uh, I start journaling the things that I, that are the truths that I know about myself uh, and that I, and that I know to be true. I start journaling those first thing in the morning because what it's doing is it's that it's, it, implanting that truth into the very narrow pathways of my brain. And I'm beginning to believe and live in that truth. Now you could be saying, well, why are you, why are you having to force feed yourself that truth? That's just the world we live in because the world that's around us is constantly trying to force feed us lies. We have to push that away. Yes. But we also have to force feed ourselves the truth. And the, as much as you can do that, uh, the, the, the sooner you'll realize how much better it can be in, in, in your mental health. Uh, truth is indeed the most powerful weapon. So um, that's just a few key things from the book that I hope you take away from it. Um, I can't wait to be with you on YouTube this uh, Tuesday night, October the 1st at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can find the link on my YouTube page. Just search Dustin Pete on YouTube or you can go to DustinPete.com slash book and click on the link there for the live virtual launch party. I cannot wait to see you there. I cannot wait to share this book with you. It is finally here. Thank you all so much. Let's get into it. Let's start and con- can, let's continue. Sorry, let's continue the conversation around mental health and let people know that they're not alone in their journey, that they can overcome, and that truth is a powerful weapon. Next time we will celebrate. Next time we will celebrate the launch of this book on this podcast, and I cannot wait to talk to you then. Have a great week.